Hi everyone, welcome to the Tropic Marin Channel. My name is Sam Nietzscher, I'm a researcher at the University of Oldenburg here in Wilhelmshaven, but also co-founder of the Cyreef LLC, a company that was recently launched with the aim to produce corals through sexual reproduction for the aquarium trade. And here we're in our new facility. Everything is brand new, just set up, still cycling some of them. Some systems are running. We have the first big spawning. We have lots of baby corals, but you can check that out in a different video. Right now, I want to talk about our new filtration device, the, the drum filter. In summer this year, we actually did a video about the drum filter at the place where it's being produced, but only in German. So now we're going to do one in English. And here it is. It's uh, called the tiny drum. I think it's not so tiny, but if you see that the bigger model models you would agree that it's rather tiny. So this is a drum filter that takes out particles from the water and the way it works is basically almost the same as a cloth filter. This one is a, a rearing system for the baby corals. It's important that we reduce sedimentation as much as possible because sedimentation is a problem for the tiny corals. Corals are really really small the babies and we already published studies about that so for us it's really important to take out as much sediment as possible and you could either do that in the currently traditional way of using cloth filters like we do at the university. There's videos about the university facilities that you can check out also here on the Tropic Marin channel but right now I want to talk about the, the drum filter that we're uh, using here. So this drum filter works in a pretty simple way. So it's two tubes basically, a big one and then a, a mesh tube that is inside uh, of the filter. And you have the water coming in through the backflow pipes. All the water has to pass through that drum inside of this uh, clear tube. You can select the, the mesh size. Right now we have almost 80 micrometers uh, mesh, meaning everything that is bigger than 80 micrometers uh, is being filtered out and is getting stuck in the mesh. So after a while, the mesh fills up with sediment and particles and stuff and the water doesn't flow as easily anymore. So the water level inside the drum rises and then at a certain level, which you can program freely as you want, it's being washed out. So on the way, it's happening. I, I can do it manually as well. So we have the controller system here. Uh, so usually it's on auto. You can uh, select at which level it's going to uh, rinse, but I'm going to do it manually right now. I switch on motor and pumps. So here now you can see how the, the brown stuff, the sediment is being washed out of the, the mesh. We have uh, high powered outlets that spray the water onto the mesh and inside is a half tube that collects the the stuff that is being washed out basically and that then runs through here and is being collected in in this canister here see there there it's coming out one of the benefits is that it's being removed immediately i can actually check what kind of sediment is it i can wash it out and then put it under the microscope if i want to and it's gone from the system at the same time you're using system water to rinse out the the mesh see now the mesh is white again it's not brown anymore so everything has been washed out so that's a very easy way to remove particles i don't and that is uh, one of the benefits of that type of filter compared to the cloth filter cloth filter works fine as well we use it at the uh, at the institute but once the cloth is full you have to throw it out basically so you produce a lot of uh, waste if you will and you have to invest quite some time to take out the old cloth put in new cloth which in itself is not that much time but if you have to do it for seven systems or in total 12 systems it takes up quite a bit of time so with that it's rinsing automatically it saves a lot of time and it also saves a lot of waste i mean these things compared to a cloth filter are more expensive but if we calculate over a long time and i expect to be using these uh, filters for a long time then it uh, i'm sure it's worth it so in this part here is where the pump is that uh, cleans out the mesh. We have a high high pressure pump that is using system water to clean out the mesh. The control itself is in this panel. It's going to be mounted on the outside of the shelf right now. It's still sitting here along with the Abyss controller. So this is going to be all neatly put in its place. Uh, but right now we have, have it just sitting here and here you can uh, select the different functions. At what water level do you want to rinse it? How long you want to rinse it? Yeah, so you can modify it to your purpose. Uh, a coral system of course produces a lot less uh, sedimentation, a lot less waste than an uh, aquaculture system for food production, like for fish. Right In these systems you have a much higher accumulation of, of sediments. According to your needs you can uh, adjust basically how the 
all the filter functions. The thing is, it's much more expensive than a uh, cloth filter. So for the home aquarium, if you have one tank at home, it may not be the, the ideal choice unless your tank is uh, really big, uh, let's put it like that, or big enough to uh, uh, warrant such a filtration system. But for bigger facilities, for fish stores, for aquaculture uh, facilities, I think that's a very neat way of uh, yeah, reducing the maintenance time and also the, the waste production. So and that's why we selected that. The whole thing is built in Germany, in uh, Saxony, by the company Spanger, who also built most of the facility here. So it's a really high quality product. Everything is made and manufactured here. So we recently visited the factory and had a look at each single step of how these kinds of filter are put together. So that was very impressive. So far it's been running for yeah, two months now, and I'm very happy with that filter. The rinsing process is being done with system water. That means you're removing water from the system that is then accumulating here in this canister. And that water you, of course, need to replace depending on how often it rinses. But in the way we run the facility here, this canister fills up in about two weeks. So per day, is not, uh, it's not that much uh, water that is, is being, being removed. One thing that is to be considered, the way we use it here is it's, it's being supplied with water only by gravity. So our main pump, the Abyss A200, pumps the water into the tanks and then it goes through the standpipes, flow through gravity, through the, the filter. So there is no pressure on the filter itself. The only electric part, if you will, are the pressurized rinsing module, everything else is happening by gravity. The way we connected it to our system is uh, with these valves. So that gives us the option to, uh, to close these valves and then either replace the, the mesh if we want to put in a finer mesh or a wider mesh or we want for whatever reason we need to open that thing. It can be done easily by opening these screws and then you can take off the front part. So if I close the valve here, then you'll see that the water level in the and then it already recognized the water level is rising and starts the cleaning process because the filter thinks that thing is super dirty but it's only because i closed the valve so i can now open it again and then uh, it calms down again well now you know the type of filtration we use in our new facility yeah if that was interesting for you there's going to be more videos about the facilities about what we do here uh, progress of our corals, you're most welcome to uh, check it out here on the channel. Until then, take care and uh, all the best. Bye-bye.